This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this 3D block style text using Inkscape and at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using and today's tutorial is going to be more for uh, intermediate or advanced users of, of Inkscape if you're a beginner with Inkscape you can try to follow along but this may be this tutorial may be moving along at a pace that's beyond your comfort zone so I just figured I'd give you a heads up about that so let me minimize this and get started in Inkscape I'm gonna set the view to custom and then I'll go to zoom I'll zoom in at one-to-one -one. open up the align and distribute menu make sure there's last selected chosen there open up the edit objects colors gradients and stroke and I'll go to the text tool and the font I'm using is called League Gothic uh, just make sure I'll, I'll have a link to that in the description just make sure to download and install that before you open Inkscape if you'd like to use this font otherwise um, you could use your own font so I'll just uh, click on the canvas I'm gonna use all caps and write text I'll go to the text editor and find that font Lee Gothic there it is apply that close out of the text editor uh, I'll go back to the select tool just gonna hold control and shift and scale this up a little bit and uh, I'll convert this to a path path object to path then I'll ungroup it and then go to path union then I'll, uh, I'll duplicate that right click duplicate turn that red and I'll put that beneath the black text and I'm gonna give that a red outline by holding shift and clicking on the color red let me go to the stroke style tab and make that a little bigger. Let me try a 10 point stroke, see how that looks. Uh, maybe a little bigger, 12, uh, maybe 11. The idea is you don't want these two corners connecting up here, the, the X and the T. Um, I guess I'll just go with 10, 10 is pretty good. Let me press one to zoom back out and I'll go to path, stroke to path, path, break apart, path, Union. So we pretty much have that text only uh, slightly bigger like that. So uh, what I'll do next is I'm going to click on this red text. Oh, let me zoom in. Click on the red text. Right click it and go to duplicate. And I'll turn it blue. And press 1 and zoom back out. And I'm going to take this blue text and send it down and to the right using the keys on the keyboard, the arrow keys. So let me press down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we're going to send it to the right the same number of times you sent it down. So that's 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'll send that to the bottom. And I'm going to grab the Bezier pen. Let me zoom in on this a bit. I'm going to grab the Bezier pen and I'm going to connect all the corner pieces together to make it, um, to make it look like it's 3D. So let, before I do that, I'm just going to click and drag over all of it and bring the opacity down so I can see the corners beneath the different layers. And click off of that and deselect and I'm just gonna press B to grab the Bezier pen and I'll turn on the snap to cusp nodes I'm just gonna connect these corners together like that and I'll connect this corner to this corner like that and I'll connect this corner here like that and I'll go back to the select tool I'm gonna hold shift and click on those three shapes that I just drew and hold shift and click on the blue text and go to path Union, so you can see what that did. It made it look like it's um, like it's 3D, like that. And we didn't have to. You notice how we didn't have to do that with this corner because there's already the illusion of it being 3D is already there. So we're only doing this to corners where there's like a gap, like that. So let me just go back to the Bezier pen, press B, and I'll go along and do that to all of the corners there. I'll try to do this. Um, let me try to make this a little quicker so this video isn't about um, three and a half hours long there's a tool in Inkscape that does this called extrude but uh, I like doing it manually because I think it just comes out looking better something with the extrude tool I don't know if I'm using it wrong or what but whenever I try to use the, ex the um, uh, extensions generate from path extrude whenever I try to use that it like there's always like gaps between the different objects and it doesn't it doesn't look right so I like to do it manually and I like to be in the habit of doing these things manually anyway because it just um, it gives you more control over the appearance like when you use these extensions there's usually just like one 
you usually get just one option. When you do these things manually, you can make this look however you want. Connect that together like that. And let me zoom back out by pressing one. I'll go back to the select tool. I'm gonna to hold shift and click on all of those shapes that we just drew. Unify them together. And hold shift, click on the blue text and unify that together, path, union. And there you have that. So let me click in, oh, you know what? I missed this one down here. I'll hold shift, click that one and then that one. Unify them all together and there you have that. So. Let me click and drag over all of that and bring the opacity up. I'll turn off the snap to cusp nodes. Am I zoomed in? Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to color this thing in a bit. So I'm going to turn this, I'm going to take this black text and I'm going to make this uh, a shade of orange. I'm going to start with yellow. Then I'll go to the fill tab under the HSL tab and I'll take the H column and slide this to the left a little bit. Maybe uh, that much. And I'll give that a gradient by clicking on the linear gradient tool. Press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. Click on that stop to the right, bring the opacity up. Take the L column and send that to the left to make that darker. And I'll take this darker stop and put it at the bottom. And I'll take the lighter stop and hold control and bring it up to the top. And let me go back to the select tool. And I'm gonna click on the red shape going around it. Let me zoom in so I can grab that. Click on the red shape, the red text. And I'm going to make that that shade of yellow, but I'm going to leave it that shade. And I'll give that a linear gradient as well. Press G on the keyboard for the gradient tool. Click on that stop, bring the opacity all the way up. And let me zoom in on this a little bit so I could double click that line and give that another stop. Oops. There we go. And I'll click on this, uh, let me zoom out a little bit. I'll click on the stop to the right. And I'm going to make this lighter by sliding the L column to the, to the right, almost white. You want that to be almost white. And I'll do the same thing to the stop on the left. We'll make that almost white. And I'll take this and put this towards the top. And I'll take this one, put that to the bottom, hold control so it goes straight down. And I'll take this center stop, this yellowish one, and bring that up here. Maybe about that much. Maybe down here. All right, that's pretty good like that. So we go back to the select tool and let me click on the blue text, our little 3D part. I'm going to make that the same shade of yellow, but I'll make this a little darker. I'll maybe even give this more of an orange hint as well. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to give this a linear gradient as well. Press G on the keyboard for the gradient tool. I'll click on that. Stop over there to the right. Bring the opacity up. Make that darker take this stop and put it at the bottom and take this stop hold control and bring it straight up like that and then we'll go back to the select tool and what should I do next let me see what's okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and draw some shapes I'm gonna help um, add more dimension to the 3D effect. It looks kind of 3D as it is, but I'm just gonna help accentuate it a little bit by drawing little shapes in here. And let me show you exactly what I mean. I'll go to the Snap to Cusp Nodes tool, press B to get the Bezier pen, and I'm gonna snap to this corner and click, and I'll snap to that corner and click, snap to this corner and to that one, and connect it back together. And I'm gonna press F7 to get the dropper and make it the same shade of this darker color down here like that. Maybe a little lighter, it doesn't need to be that dark. And I'll get rid of the black outline by holding shift and clicking the X. And let me just go back to the select tool and lower that until it goes beneath this yellow edge right there. Oops. There we go. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go and do that to the rest of the letters. You see what that did? It, it, it gave it more like a dimension. It looks more 3D now. So let me go and do that to the rest of these letters. I'll press B to get the Bezier pen. Start at this corner, hold control, bring this to the right, snap to that corner, snap there, snap there, there you go. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. Click that one, and then that one, that one, that one, and there. And do this down here as well. Back to there. And 
I'm just gonna go and draw these shapes on all of these little uh, all of these letters. I'll try. To, I'm trying to do this a little uh, quick so the video doesn't end up being two and a half hours long. There we go. Uh, that looks pretty good. And for this last one, actually, you know what? Let me press one and zoom out. I'll go to the select tool. Actually, let me zoom in a little bit. For this last one, the letter T, we already created these shapes, so we can just, just duplicate these. Right click, duplicate, and put it on there like that. Right click, duplicate. There we go. Click that, right click, duplicate, and there we go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take I'm gonna focus on these bottom shapes down here. I'm gonna hold shift and click on all of these bottom shapes because these are gonna be different colors. And I'm gonna unify them all together. Path union. And I'm gonna hold I'm gonna press F7 on the keyboard and get the uh, dropper tool. And I'm gonna make this the shade of yellow right there. Like that. Maybe a little darker than that. And I'm gonna get rid of that black outline by holding shift and clicking on the X. And let me give that a linear gradient. Let me turn off the snap to cusp nodes. And I'll press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. I'll click on this gradient over here to the right. Bring the opacity up and then make it darker like that. And I'll take the darker stop and put it at the bottom. And I'll take the lighter stop and hold control and bring it up. Maybe like that. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go back to the select tool, and I'm gonna click on that shape, and then hold shift and click on all of these other shapes, except for that one, not that one. Click on all those other shapes, and not that one. With all those selected, press F7 to get the dropper, and we're gonna make them all the same shade as that one, so that, which is why we didn't click on it because it's already colored in. And we'll get rid of this. We'll get rid of the stroke by holding shift and pressing the X. And let me go back to the select tool. Um, let me click off of it to deselect everything and click on this shape right here and just make sure that's lowered beneath the yellow edge. Same thing with this here, just lower that beneath the yellow edge. And let me press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. Let me see what's next. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on this orange text. And let me just right click that and go to duplicate and take that duplicated copy and put it off to the side. We're going to work with that in a minute. I'm going to take this this uh, orange text right here, go to extensions, actually no filters, shadows and glow, inner shadow. And that's going to give that an inward shadow like that. Make it look like this is carved into the blocks like that. And I think that looks pretty good. And the next step will be, um, let me click and drag over all of that. And we'll right click it and go to duplicate. And we'll go to filters remove filters, and then path, union. We'll turn that black, we'll send that to the bottom, and using the arrow keys, just bring that down into the right a little bit. This is gonna be kinda like a drop shadow. We'll give that a slight blur, bring the opacity down. That's pretty good. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna apply a shadow, I mean not a shadow, um, a texture over the uh, over this text here, and I provided a link to that in the description. So just go to the uh, go to the link and download the texture and save it where you can easily access it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to shrink down the Inkscape window, and I'm going to take the texture. I have it right here on my desktop. I'll just click and drag it into Inkscape. Click OK to import it. Maximize it, and let me take this. This is pretty big. I'll hold Control and Shift and scale this down, and I'm going to put it over this text right here. Let me bring the opacity down just so I can see it, the text beneath it. And I'm going to right click that texture and go to duplicate and put that off to the side. We're going to use that copy again in a minute. And um, I'm just going to hold control and shift and scale this down. That's pretty good. And I'll click and drag over both of those. Bring the opacity up. Go to object, mask, set. And I'm actually going to turn that black. And I'll hold shift and click on the orange text and center that on the vertical and horizontal axis. Click off of it to deselect. Click on just 
the texture and bring the opacity down just so there's like a hint of it showing through like that. I want it to have a texture like that. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. And let me see what else, what else do I have to do here? All right, so I guess the final step would be to give this a backdrop. So let's uh, create a rectangle. Create a rectangle over the text like that. Bring the opacity all the way up. And from the color picker, I'm going to give this a dull shade of blue. Maybe that, this right here. We'll go back to the select tool, send this to the bottom. And I'm going to hold shift and click on the text and just make sure it's centered on the horizontal and vertical axis. Click off of it to deselect. And I'll click on just just the uh, the blue rectangle right here. I'll give that a linear gradient. Press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. Click on that stop. Bring the opacity all the way up. Slide the L column over to the left to make that darker. Maybe like that much. Put the darker stop at the bottom. Put the lighter stop at the top and hold control so it goes straight up. That's pretty good. And I'll go back to the select tool. And I'm going to right click that blue rectangle and go to duplicate and turn that black. Turn that black. And then I'm going to take our texture and raise this to the top. And I'm going to hold shift and click on the black rectangle and center it on the vertical and horizontal axis. And hold shift and click on the black rectangle to deselect it so we just have the texture selected. And I'll hold control and shift and scale this texture up until it's bigger than the black rectangle. And then I'll hold control and shift and click on the texture where it's overlapping with the black tech with the black rectangle so we have them both selected like that. And with them both selected, I'll just bring the opacity up and object mask set. And I'll just lower this to the bottom and then bring it up one step. Bring the opacity of that down. We don't want that. We don't want that too dark. I'll click on this drop shadow. I'm just going to make this a little darker. And this here, this little block where the E is, let me click on that little block and make that a little darker as well. It's not quite showing through. And you can go and make the rest of this darker. You can go and um, you can play with the colors if you'd like to make this look a little sharper. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to play with the colors. Maybe I'll take um, maybe I'll take the orange. Let me hold Alt and click on that again. I'll take the orange and take this bottom stop and make that a little darker. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can create some 3D block style text uh, with the texture on it using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.